that's what we are talking about today. It's been the holiday resilience and mastermind. Uh, I don't know how many of you all have uh, had a chance to know me. And just to give a really brief introduction on myself is I spent uh, the first 10 years of my life in restaurant, then <laughs> the next uh, probably 11 years in retail. And uh, then I moved into vendor services for very large corporations and helped them launch retail programs. So inside of Solar City and Tesla and Vivint Smart Home, uh, we, we launched a retail team, went into retail stores and just, you know, uh, went gangbusters. And what I found out from just about every industry that I went into was that most of the industries that I worked in uh, and then leaving restaurant and retail and getting into real estate and coaching and uh, speaking and training, just about every industry I went into to tell me the story about how their business was seasonal. What's really, really interesting is even though everybody expects retail to be seasonal, I, I found out that so many times inside of that seasonal business that if we uh, did the correct follow-up, if we uh, arranged our own little events to happen at any given time during the year, we could actually spur on business at a much higher rate than what we would actually see on any individual day surrounding you know, the, the Christmas season per se, right? Like, like I, I was able to figure out how to turn my slowest week in, inside of a Chuck E. Cheese of all things into my busiest week of the year. We were able to turn one of our slowest weekends uh, inside of Lumber Liquidators into a very anticipated event that happened every year. And so what we realized is if we create the right plan and follow up with our clients in the right way leading up to that plan, that we don't have to have a roller coaster inside of our sales business. And that's really what this is about. A lot of us, especially if we're entrepreneurs, solopreneurs that are providing a service-based industry, we tend to see services go down leading up to Christmas and because everybody's spending their money in retail, right? <laughs> but as the retail industry and restaurant industry starts to spread their business out more across the year because they don't want to be a roller coaster either, we're seeing that services likewise can get very busy in, uh, in the fall as well and in the winter. So that's what we're talking about today. Let me take an opportunity to introduce um, the rest of the team. So, you know, I just said a little bit about myself, but I am Jeff. Uh, I am one of the franchise partners here for the Maryland, D.C. and Delaware franchise for Cyberbacker. I'm also a speaker and a trainer. This is literally what I do for a living. So hopefully you all enjoy it. Uh, <laughs> and I'm a leadership coach. I work with businesses that are looking to grow. And I work with the leaders on their teams to learn how to hire and onboard and train their people right and hold them accountable to the business that they're looking to achieve. So next, we've got two other ladies on our team that I'm sure most of you have met before. And if not, you get to meet them today. So Shara, take it away. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Hey, everyone. My name is Shara. I am the growth backer in this franchise. So I work with a different clients and I help them evaluate their business to figure out what is the most important thing in their business and how we can really help them to be focused on making and growing their business and to be more successful. So enjoy the mastermind. Thanks, Shara. Irene, tell us a little bit about yourself. Thanks, Jeff. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Cyberbacker, Maryland. So I am Irene. I'm a career backer, and I'm in charge of partnering our clients with highly skilled, high caliber Cyberbacker. Thank you. All right. Thank you both. Uh, always a pleasure to have you all on the call and to be a part of the team. So if any of you all missed last month, last month, we did our charting your business into 2024 business planning workshop. We had quite a few attendees uh, tell us it was the best business planning workshop that they've had a chance to ever go to. So if you're looking for some of those tools, let myself know, let Shara know, and we can get those emailed out to you. And that way, uh, even though you missed the class, you, you can work through some of the tools on your own in order to build a good plan for next year. So just let us know. Now, finally, it's time to get into the business, right? I mean, here we are. Uh, it's time for the holidays. And, and I don't know about you, but when when I when I think about the holidays, I've just got to wear my hat. Anybody have their own Christmas hat that they just wear around year round? No. I'll tell you what. One of the big reasons that I'm looking forward to uh, to Christmas this year, Irene. You know what one of the big reasons is I'm looking for Christmas? I just love the songs that we get to sing. All right. So as a parent, what do you think my favorite song to sing during Christmas is? Come on, Irene. I know you've got a guess. What do you think my favorite song is to sing during Christmas? 
All right, we've got Santa Claus is coming to town. It's not a bad guest. As a parent, my favorite song is Silent Night. Oh, <laughs> all right. Anyway, <laughs> so honestly, though, when we're thinking about Christmas, we start to think about what? When we're thinking about the holidays. What's the first thought that comes to your mind when you're thinking about the holidays? Let me have it in the chat or, or come off mute. First thing you think about when you think about approaching the holidays. So more time with family, gift giving, love it. Happy people and presents. Oh, all that. Everybody's giving me these happy thoughts. See, again, I came from retail. When I think about Christmas, I think about craziness. <laughs> so, so Chuck E. Cheese, I think about craziness. Eggnog. Oh, you know, if we want to go with the, uh, the National Lampoon version of it, you know, that's perfect. So absolutely. We think about a lot of different things when we think about Christmas. And often most of those things are going to require us to get a little bit more hectic, uh, run around a little bit more, you know, plan a few more things, plan some holiday gatherings to have with our families. It starts to bring us some hustle and bustle to the holidays. I'm All right. Yeah. I mean, just shopping and harder to find parking places at the shopping centers and longer lines at the place that we're going to pick up our food from. And all of those things lead to some really good events with our family, our friends, and if we do it right, perhaps even our clients. So what can we do to keep our business strong? These are the three points that we're going to go over today to talk about what we can do to grow our business going through this fourth quarter in our sales. So the first things first is, I know, stating the obvious, we need to get really clear on our goals, okay? We went through that again last month. We'll, we'll have a very mini recap here in just a moment. We have to deliver an engaging message. There are a lot of messages hitting all of our clients right now as we speak and with all of those messages that are pouring in and hitting our clients what we find is that our message can get lost unless we make sure it's engaging and something that it is that our clients are going to call attention to so and finally we're, we need to have that plan to get that message out to the client so have the message and then have a plan to get it out to the clients finally execute the plan right like just just having it doesn't necessarily do anything if we don't put a plan in place to follow it so first things first, let's talk a little bit about setting our goals. Anybody that's been in business, I hope that you have written down your goal for the year for 2023. So who's going to be the brave soul that tells me, what was your goal for this year? You can put it in the chat or shout it out loud, but, but let's share. Let's share what our goal was for the year. What were you hoping to accomplish this year? We're in November. We've got two months left. What was your goal for the year? 50 units from Corey. Thank you, Corey. So Corey, roughly speaking, um, how, how many have you done this year? How did we do? If you're not going to share out loud or in the chat, that's fine. But please do yourself a favor and write these down, right? What was your goal? How did we do? There we go. Corey's got 48 and two more pending, which means he's on track to hit his goal. Everything going to go okay with those two? Any reason to suspect that they might not? We need to have something in the buffer? All right, good. Love it. So yeah, right. Really, Char is used to that bell all the time. Right. Let's ring it. Great. I love that. So here we are. We've hit our goal for the year. And the really cool thing about that, especially in the service industry, is that means that we get to really focus in on what it is that we're doing in order to hit our goals for next year, right? Set the goal for next year and figure it out. Now, if we haven't hit our goal for this year, we've got two months to do it. This is conversations I'm having with a lot of my coaching clients right now. What do we need to do to hit our goal for the end of the year? What's most likely to occur? Where are our clients in the pipeline? What can we do to motivate it, right? Asking yourself the questions, what do I need to do to hit the goal by the end of the year? Not only just the units, but also some of the activities, okay? I need you to know this because this is gonna be a part of the messaging that we're reaching out to our clients with. And then what is our big goal for 2024? And then finally, this is again, one of the most important questions that we need to have for our messaging is the next one. So what happens when we accomplish it? So if you know your goal next year is, again, 50 units, you're hoping to maintain market share, and I'm not saying that it is yet, but if you know that you want to maintain market share, what does that mean to your business to maintain market share and what's considered a rough year for a lot of service industries? How does maintaining business help you? What does your business accomplish? Or if you have a larger goal and you know that you can increase your business because you're not in a, an industry that's being affected too much about the real estate market. So... Like maybe you're in the construction industry, which is seeing some of the opposites. We're seeing a lot of people do home improvements that aren't moving. 
They're finally putting on that spare bedroom, right? Uh, they're finally uh, redoing their bathroom. So, so in that sense, uh, maybe your goal is to go up. But tell me, again, in the chat, come off a of mute somebody and let me know. When your business accomplishes this goal next year, what happens? So you set a bigger goal for what? When and, and I'm not asking for a big why per se, but for what? Like, it, you know, when you start doing more money as a business, what are you allowing to happen inside of your business? I think motivation right now is the hardest thing in the market. So okay. if we if we hit our goals, I think sometimes you can lose motivation after you hit your goal. And even more so in a tough market as it is. Okay. So, so maybe to like increase your goals for the next year to regain motivation or the fire, so to yeah. speak. Yeah. And, and Corey, uh, do you have any, is it just you? You have anybody else in, in your business with you? Just me. Nope. And so, so when you hit these 50, what else are you able to accomplish in your life? So more freedom for yourself. Perfect. Love it. Great. And when you get that freedom, what are you going to do? Oh man. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's kind of where I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love that. Uh, you know, and I can uh, only speak for myself. You know, when when we got started in our business with Cyberbacker, like, you know, one of the conversations I had, I know with Shara specifically was, hey, Shara, when we start hitting these goals, what do you want to do? And Shara, what was one of, you know, what happened when you were able to start hitting your goals? Do you remember? Of course you do. Well, first of all, we always celebrate if ever we have wins. Right. So we're still just continuing doing it. And the goal for me as a, as a growth backer is to really retain our clients as much as we can. And, and, and I know uh, Irene often talks about uh, creating jobs as part of her goal, right? So I know both you and Irene have a little bit more of a mission involved in, in your goal. Not only is it a goal to hit a specific number, but there is a bit of a mission. Irene, tell me a little bit about the mission that you have when you hit your goal. For me to make sure that the cyber backer is um, having a great relationship with uh, his or her client is we want to make sure uh, that they are both happy so that they will grow together. We want to see growth, right? And I know that's one of the reasons I started a cyber backer franchise was I wanted to see small businesses succeed, being able to hire people for their team at a more affordable rate. That's why I got into business coaching. I, I saw a lot of small businesses fail locally and I wanted to have an opportunity, having worked for Tesla to come in and say, hey, listen, like, this is one of the reasons that we grew so big across the country uh, in Vivint Smart Home. One of the things that we did to make sure that we're crushing our sales goals each year. How can we do that inside of your team and your business in order to help you succeed? That's one of the reasons we bring these classes every month. We want to see you succeed. So that's part of our goal. That's what happens when we accomplish it. When we accomplish it, we know we've provided an additional 100 plus jobs to people in the Philippines, while at the same time, helping 100 plus businesses in Maryland, D.C. and Delaware have a chance to succeed at a, at a more affordable price, which is, is awesome for us. Uh, I know a real estate agent that that their their goal is to take a portion of their proceeds each transaction and put it into a fund that will help a homeless person buy a home, right? And so that's one of the things that they do uh, to help accomplish it. I know other people who just know that as their team becomes more successful, they're able to help more families find their dream home, right? And perhaps that's the only reason that it is that you do real estate is like you have a passion for helping people find their dream home because you went through that experience yourself and you know how much finding a home changed your life and changed your economic uh, uh, status as, just as far as what your net worth looks like 30 years later, right? And again, in construction, helping people to turn their home into a dream home for their clients, the home that they're in and maybe growing out of a little bit or needs a little updating. So again, when you accomplish your goal in 2024 and you help 50 people find those homes. Tell me, write it down. What happens for your team, for your clients? What is the mission that is accomplished by helping those people next year? Okay. Get clear on that concept for you, on, on what it is that you're doing in the world. What is your service providing for your clients? How does that make you unique? How does that make your business unique? Because you are unique. There's nobody that can provide 
a service to your clients the way that you do. Are there other people that can provide a great service to your clients? Absolutely. For sure, there are other people that are great and nobody will do it the way that you do it, right? <laughs> so what do you bring to the table? What can you help them with? What can you help your people with that nobody else can in a way that nobody else can? Okay, anyone have anything they wanna add before we move on? Here we go. Now, once you've focused in on that, how are we going to deliver this message to our clients? What's the message? What is it that you want to tell them about that, right? What's that purpose? Again, we're, we're, we're focusing in on this. So because as you start to tell people what it is, is your message, and there's a guy, I don't know if you all have ever heard of him. If anybody's ever heard of ClickFunnels, you've probably heard of this guy, but maybe not by name. His name's Russell Brunson. At one point, Russell Brunson started a podcast. This actually motivated me to start putting a video online every single day for a year because he started a podcast that basically uh, the whole concept of the podcast is I, I everybody should should publish their thoughts every day, publish your message every day. And initially when he started saying that he was talking about blogging, right? Cause blogging was a thing whenever at some point, right? And, and, you know, he doesn't care how it is that you're publishing your thoughts every day, whether you're just writing something up on Facebook, whether you're writing a blog, whether you're sending out uh, a short email to your clients, whether you're posting a video. But the point is, is to get in front of your audience every single day in some way or another and just give them your thoughts, give them in your ideas. And the longer it is and the more often it is that you give those thoughts and ideas, the more often you are able to start getting clear on your message, right? What's your message? What's your voice? How can you find your voice? Because the more often that you're able to talk about your message and give your voice and talk about your mission and talk about your goals with others, the more you're going to attract others to you that you can start to call your tribe. So who here feels like they've got a good group of clients that surround themselves already that they can kind of call their tribe or are able to call their tribe and strongly call their tribe? Core foundation of clients that they know is their tribe already because they've shared their message and they've, they've found They've found their people. Give me a little uh, emoji hand wave if you think you found your people. Not a lot. And maybe, okay, great, Nisi. You've got some. So do me a favor. Throw into the chat, Nisi. If you feel like you found your people, just tell me what it is that you did or come off of mute and, and share. What do you think you did to help find your people? How is it that you found your people? Because a few people on here haven't apparently. And that's okay. I don't always feel like I found my people. Not all the time. Sometimes <laughs> I know they're my people, but not all the time. <laughs> So I would just say friends and family, like my sphere. And then I branch out from there. So I just, I mean, really, that's my focus database, Keller Williams, and right. then extend on that. So when I do a friend's cousins or a friend's nieces, um, you help them buy a house or sell a house, bring them into the fold and love on them for mm. them to then share uh me refer me to their other friends and family and build a network from there oh yeah great perfect i love that the only thing that uh, goes against what you just said is my mom's never bought a thing from me so well i know my mom loves <laughs> me and I, i'd probably call her one of my strongest advocates uh she never buys anything from me so <laughs> yeah and you know what your mom doesn't have to but if your mom tells her friends use my son jeff right you got a Amen. referral partner in your mom 100%, 100%. In fact, the one time my mom bought something from a store I worked at was the week after I quit. <laughs> and I, I say that seriously, and I love what you said, honestly. I'm just making jokes about my mom, which are true. But uh, uh, we love her. You know, gave her big hugs over the weekend at, our, at the wedding we were just at. So, so that being said, I, I love what you said. You start with your closest advocates, right? Your friends, your family. And then you start having uh getting the referrals from them to to grow that core group and and what gets really interesting about that is like you're going to have some people that are that are more distant in your life that will give referrals and guess what usually the more distant people in your life that give referrals those people tend to also still just be distant but the close people in your life that bring in referrals like those close people the referrals they bring into also tend to start being close right because the people that are closest to you, again, they're your tribe and they know you the best and often will refer you some of the best people to work with, which is, which is really fun and exciting. It's also a great way uh, to do in-person hiring. 
people that know you and love you and respect you the most are going to bring people to you that will also know you, love you, and respect you the most traditionally uh, because they know who you are. They're going to know people that you work well with, which is awesome. So keep that in mind as we're going through because we're going to talk to those people that are close to us about our mission, right? Everybody loves to be a hero. And so as we go to share our mission more with our tribe, they're going to want to help us accomplish that. They become a little de facto board of directors for us. They become our raving fans, our cheering squad. They're going to check in on us and figure out how it is that we're doing with our goals. And at the same time, they're going to bring people to you, as you mentioned, who will help us to hit the goals. But we need to be able to tell them what our goals are. And we'll talk a little bit more about how we're going to tell them in just a bit. Uh, but in the meantime, make sure that we are, are telling them their goals. And while we're telling them our goals, we can also do what? After we tell them our goals, what can we do? I was going to say, we can ask them about their goals. There you go. We can ask them about theirs. In fact, there's a great book on it. Just showed you on the screen. Have it sitting right here behind me. Building a Story Brand with Donald Miller. And if any, has anybody read that, that book? There's a great framework for building a story brand. Let me know in the chat if you want to see it. And we can email it out to you after, after the call. It's not what we're going through today. That's a whole call by itself. But there's a great framework in building a story brand, which you should take your clients through a hero's journey. Basically what that means is you find out their goal and you become the Yoda, right? <laughs> you become Gandalf. You're the guide in the story that helps the hero along. And a lot of us know what our clients are coming to us to get. We know the product they're, they're working with us on, but how many of us dig into the reasoning behind the product it is uh, that they're searching for? right? So what part of the hero's journey, what client's goal can we help them accomplish? And this isn't just with the service that they're buying for us, by the way. Like I know that I had a friend that when I worked at Lumber Liquidators, running the biggest store in the country. And every time I went to one of their client event parties, <clears throat> he would introduce me to other contractors and people that flipped houses uh, and introduce me as, you know, here, Here's your new flooring guy, right? And so he would, like, again, learning what your client's goals are, knowing how it is that you can be a connector with them. And how, how well do you think that clients will join your tribe when they know that you've got their back and you're helping them hit their goals by being a connector? One of my coaching clients just did this this week. Um, he, he laughed with me about it, and then I kicked him in the butt. And the laughing was that he had somebody come to him and say, hey, you know, I know you're uh, a custom door and window uh, installer. Could you could you please uh, help me get these custom windows? And he's like, oh, I don't do that. I'm like, yeah, but dude, you're somebody that does, right? Like, he's like, well, yeah, I know a lot of people that do. I was like, okay, let's connect them, right? <laughs> Talk about the good graces that you build when you connect uh, your clients, when you connect uh, the other people that you know and that you work with together in order to help them accomplish their goals. And sure enough, so he made that connection. He jumped on a couple of different calls with them to make sure everything was working out. Uh, and, and both of them super excited and happy that they've made a connection uh, through this particular person. So thought that was awesome, thought that was fun. And what a great way uh, to really engage with your clients during the season. So one other great thing that we can do is what? Big hint on the screen. Another message that we can share is a message of what? Hint. Gratitude. There we go. A message of gratitude. We're going to say thanks. Thank you, Nisi. Really appreciate you playing in. <laughs> uh, so listen, how many of you all have ever sent your clients Christmas cards? Give me a thumbs up or say yes in the chat. How many of you have ever sent them Thanksgiving cards? A lot of people send, thanks send Christmas cards. How many of us send a message at Thanksgiving that just says, hey, I'm thankful for you, right? Gives them a phone call just before Thanksgiving that says, I'm grateful for our relationship. How can you express gratitude uh, to those that are close, especially your raving fans and even uh, some of your extended clients as we go into the holidays? Because sometimes that's all it takes, right? A lot of our clients already know what it is that we do. And the more we reach out to them, especially during the busy time, they may, might initially feel like, oh, here's Mark calling me again, asking for business. Oh, I don't even want to answer the phone. But when they get the phone picked up and Mark and I, I picked on Mark on purpose because I know Mark does this. I know Mark is the guy that will say, I love talking to you, right? Like I am so grateful for the conversations that we have. 
you always bring something new to the table. And they pick up the phone. And when they start to realize that that's part of the reason that Mark's calling is Mark's going to tell them how amazing they are. Like, what do you think the odds are that they're going to pick up the phone a little bit more? And we're not doing this just to get them to pick up the phone. We're doing this because of what? Because we're right there on the screen. Because we're thankful. Right? We are thankful. We are grateful. And we're going to let them know. And the more that we thank others and the more that we let others know that we're grateful, the more likely that gratitude is reciprocated. Uh, because it's impossible to give out all of your gratitude without receiving gratitude back. It just is. It's one of the, the great mysteries of life. You can't give out too many thanks and too much gratitude. It always comes back to you. Okay. Speaking of giving out gratitude to our clients and telling them that we're grateful. Are all of our clients created equal? Let's be real here. As business owners, as entrepreneurs, as salespeople, are all of our clients created equal? Jara, you're, you're my salesperson. You're not supposed to shake your head. No, no stop. <laughs> I, I saw that. She's like, oh, shucks. <laughs> James, are all of our clients created equal? No, they are not. No. That is for sure not. What, what do you mean they're not created equal? Tell me a little bit about uh, what makes them a little bit different. Honestly, I, I try to treat all clients equally, but some of them just invariably are more important than others because they're important to the survival of your business. How so? Uh, well, I'll, I'll say one thing in particular, the, the client you have right now is the most important client. <laughs> Good point. Good point. That's right. <laughs> because you're, you you got to keep them happy, but then... Um, uh, also, the ones that have been instrumental in your business growth, uh, I would think those are more important than the ones who are not. The guy who's doing the the large project with me is more important than the guy who's you know had me change the light bulb. Yeah, I a hundred percent thoroughly appreciate the way that you phrase that, right? Uh, and right i was working with a recruiting firm on a on a, a in a training workshop last year and, and one of the statements that the owner kept making as they were talking about their goals and their priorities was what's closest to the money right <laughs> like you know which one is closest to the money and uh I, and i agree with that uh, on top of systems and models that we're that we're using to organize it right and so 100% so speaking of the systems and models when we're talking about our clients and what it is that makes our clients equal thank you james uh what it is that makes our clients equal you know, one of the things I always like to pull in is, is this image of a target, right? And so, so, you know, whether it's got the arrows in it or not, you know, that client that James was just talking about, that, that's our A client. That's right there in the center. That's the target, right? We want as many clients as we can have right there in the center. They're what Nisi was talking about as far as being closest advocates, family, friends, that board of directors, the people that you know are raving fans, and they're going to pass you multiple referrals every single year. Not only are they going to pass you multiple referrals every single year, but they know what a good referral looks like. They're giving you advice and feedback on your business and talking about where when they felt let down by a, a portion of a customer service uh, area inside of your business on the last transaction, pick you up. If they pick up the phone and they call you and they tell you directly about it and they discuss it with you and like and they do it in a calm and understanding way and just the way that they just want you to know so that way you can get back to being the amazing business partner that they've had, right? Like that's our A list. Those, those are our A clients. We've all got clients in our group that act like that. Am I right? Who here has an A? Put a yes in the chat. You've got A's on your team. Absolutely, right? So those are our A list. Now the A list, what I found is the A list, uh, it's got a limited number. It's got a limited capacity. And the main reason it's got a limited number and a limited capacity is really because of us, right? You know, depending on the size of your team is going to vary on how large your A-list group can be. If it's just you yourself, you're going to have a hard time and start to feel pretty stretched out if your A's get to more than 20, okay? Most of the time, if you're working by yourself, your A-list is really just like 5 to 15, 5 to 12. You're not seeing an A-list get much deeper than that because you've got a hard time giving enough energy to, uh, 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 to, to such a raving fan because uh, raving fans not only give, but they also do expect to get some energy and some, some again, appreciation back. And so there's only so many coffees you can go on. There's only so many lunches and, and, and dinners that you can make in a month, right? And so to that extent, as you're interacting with your A's, those tend to stay A's. And if you're not able to interact with all of your A's, they really start to become B's, 
<laughs> okay? And so the bees, again, they're fans. They, you're probably the only person that they're going to use for the service that you offer, but they're not giving quite as many referrals as they had in the past, or they just don't, they, they give some, they'll give one or two, but not a lot. They don't, they don't call you as much. They don't show up to all of your events, right? Like, you know, they'll be there. If you pick up the phone and call them directly to invite them, uh, they might come. So they're going to tell others about you, but their energy isn't uh, as, as high they might not be the the customer that calls you up to tell you if something went wrong. They'd be like, oh, that's a bummer. You know, uh, Jeff used to do a much better job at that than he did this past time, right? <laughs> you know, they might not tell anybody else because they're still a fan, but they don't always pick up the phone to share that feedback with you. And so, so the bees are still fans. Uh, they're still going to show up to your events. They're still going to use you, uh, but they're not that core group, that A. Okay, fair? Who else, who, who can recognize some bees in their group? I mean, a hand wave or yes, if you know who I'm talking about. All right. All right. And then we move into our C's. C's and our core clients. Like these are the people that we know. These are the people that will like some of our stuff on Facebook, right? Uh, but we're like, they're the old high school best friend or college roommate that you hope calls you when they need your service, but you're not 100% sure they're going to, right? <laughs> like, like we interact with them just enough. Uh, that we could still call them a good acquaintances. Uh, we throw a really large party, you know, like an event at a big petting zoo or a, a movie party for our clients to come to. Like they'll probably be there for that when we've got three or 500 type people that we're inviting to an event. Uh, they might not be at the the party that you throw at your house for the closest 50, right? Like they might actually just not even show up to that. That's too small of a group for them. That starts to feel like a commitment. Who recognizes some of these C's in your database? Like we know who they are. We talk to them semi-regularly. Uh, we interact with each other on social media. Um, they might, they, they may or may not pick up my call when I call, uh, but I, you know, they'll give me a thumbs up. Okay, love that, perfect. And finally, as we're looking at our database and talking about the clients that are in our circle, the A's, the B's and the C's are really the ones that we're talking about for the, the next upcoming message. We do also have some D's the D's we're not going to focus on too much here because the D's are really the ones that need to be pruned off. And, and so that's, again, that's another call. <laughs> we're not going to talk too much today about pruning off your D's. But as far as the ones that you want to give attention to, they're the ones that are already interacting with you. The D's are part of a target database. Maybe you've done uh, some farming of some areas, like you've got a list, but uh, like on that list, like you can't even say these people know your name, but you know they're a key target demographic, right? means I'm sending them my emails. I'm trying to get them to engage. But in reality, they've never engaged with any of my material. And I'm not 100% sure they know I exist. Is that fair? So, so I'm sure we all have some of those people that have hit our database at some point in time. They responded to some ad and they never picked up the phone call since then, right? Which should probably fall off of our database at some point, but we won't go into that today. So what I do want to talk about is, is the difference between an A, a B, and a C in terms of how it is that you're gonna deliver that message this holiday, okay? That being said, my first question to you is, when are we gonna deliver our holiday messages to our clients? We're about, it's today Thursday, right? So fourth Thursday is Thanksgiving. So this is the first Thursday. So we've got three more Thursdays until Thanksgiving here in the United States. Whew, wow, it's coming on. I need to put my Christmas hat back on, I think. Uh, so, so only three Thursdays away, that's, that's 21 days uh, if we count them all. And, and most of us aren't communicating on, uh, on the weekends or on Saturdays or Sundays, we might not be calling our clients. So I guess the, my first question to you is how many of you guys are planning on reaching out and communicating to your client on Thanksgiving? Nobody's putting their hand up. Well, I, I do send like, I'll do the text. I'm one okay. of those text. Okay, great. Right on Thanksgiving, just to say happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. Oh, you're better than I am. I'll I know. I need back. to move it up. I need to move it forward so that I'm time the holiday comes and nobody's looking for me. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, nobody's wondering. Yeah, whether that's a Thanksgiving card in advance. You know, usually my Monday, Tuesday that week, uh, that's what it, what it is, at least in the past for me, uh, is, is on Mondays and Tuesdays, I'm expressing thanks. And, and my whole point that week is I'm just dialing for thank yous. You know, hey, you know. This is what I'm grateful for. And this is why I'm grateful. I don't just say thank you. I, I what it is about them that year that made an impact on me. Okay. And so 
if you can't think of anything, jump onto their Facebook and figure something out, right? Like, you know, you probably you like the post, they probably impacted you and you just forgot. And so, you know, what am I grateful for? But look at the calendar, okay? So as we are looking at our holiday calendar, you should know by what date you will communicate in what way, okay? Does it make sense? We always tend to start with an email, right? Like we might start an email for something, especially if we're having some sort of holiday party. Who likes to do holiday parties? We'll talk a little bit more about that in just a moment. But, you know, a lot of times some people will start with an email and then they move to a text that feels a little more personal. You know, we've all got those clients that's like, I don't understand why you're calling me. You should have texted first. Like who calls people anymore? Like I still call people. I think that's a great way to talk to people. <laughs> I'd much rather talk to somebody than text back and forth with somebody. Uh, especially as a uh, relationship builder that we are, right? I'd much rather have a coffee with somebody than, than even do a phone call. So if possible, uh, get on the phone and interact uh, or get in person in some way, shape or form. But if we're going to get in person and if we're going to have a coffee or we're going to have a party or we're going to send or we're going to make a phone call, like I can't wait till Wednesday on Thanksgiving and expect that I'm going to make a hundred phone calls. Am I right? It's just not going to happen. There's no way that we have a quality conversation with 100 people on Wednesday before Thanksgiving, uh, if that's how I want to relate to those people. So we have our A's, our B's, and our C's. Out of the A's, the B's, and the C's, which one of those do you think should get a phone call from us to say thank you? A, B, or C? A. A, absolutely should get a phone call, right? And some might say B's, because the B's can get up to only about 100. Uh, I can make 100 phone calls a week before Thanksgiving, right? Like stretch it out across five days, 20 a day, five days going into Thanksgiving. Could I call 100 people to say thank you? Sure. Will I? I don't know. Is it part of my plan? That's what we need to figure out, right? Like, is it part of the plan? I don't want it to be part of my plan because talking to 100 people terrifies me. Yeah, but, <laughs> but, but it was a part of the plan. When do we need to add it to the calendar? Right. So what's your plan to communicate thanks to your database going into Thanksgiving? What's our plan going into the new year and into Christmas in order to, to show uh, some gratitude, to bring them together and build a community and build a tribe? I know it's funny because clients across the U.S. do things differently. I've got a client in Utah uh, that's a real estate agent, uh, and he does uh, a lot of investment properties, too. And that client has never, by the way, heard of a pie party. <laughs> So we were talking about things that you could do uh, to engage with his clients going into the fall, convenient conversation and a convenient time. Uh, and he'd never even heard of a, of a pie party. We had to talk about what that was. I don't think there's anybody here in Baltimore County that's never seen a pie party. <laughs> but I, I can't I can't remember myself for pie parties in Baltimore. I don't know. But I'm imagining it's, it's kind of the same all over Maryland. Everybody here know what a pie party is for Thanksgiving? Got one planned with somebody on this call. All right. Well, there we go. I <laughs> love it. Perfect. So, so yeah, right. Like, I mean, it's gotten so big. Like when I, when I was in real estate, I had been to real estate agent pie parties so much. I started doing pie parties with dental surgery centers that I was working with. I know uh, retirement communities that are doing pie parties, like they're happening everywhere. I buy extra pies, just so you know, I buy extra pies to give to all the restaurants that I love to go to a lot. Talk, take a food into the restaurant for the staff to eat. They remember you a long time. Just keep it in mind, little tidbit and trick. You hand some to your favorite bartender, some pies, mm, you get, they, they will review a seat and exchange your phone number the rest of your life. So, <laughs> so, so, you know, what else can you do to create raving fans, you know, going into the fall? What parties can you have? So who else does other parties? What other parties do you do for, for this time of year that allows you to bring your clients to you instead of you jumping out there and, and trying to meet your clients all over the world over the next couple of months. I can Some honestly say, <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, I've, I've never done anything uh, like that. Although my birthday and Christmas are very close. I'm a week before Christmas. So I usually have a big party then. And friends, family, potential clients typically come to that. It's, it's an open invitation, uh, the that. way I send it out. So... I love that. Um, That's awesome. No, it's usually like a happy hour type thing. So and another friend one time, James, to go along with that idea that he wouldn't take a client that he couldn't invite to that party. Right. That was his gauge. He's like, would this person come to my birthday party? And would I want them at, you know, at that party? And uh, if the answer was no, he might not have the party. He might not take them as a client. He might pass them off as a referral. 
I thought that was an interesting way to make sure that he was maintaining an integrity to his tribe, right? Makes sense. And I'm not telling you to do that. That wasn't advice. That was just uh, something that I've heard that others did, um, uh, or I know somebody did. Uh, I think it's a great way to stay inside of your core values as as a company. Uh, and, um, you know, I mean, I think we've all had those clients uh, from from the H-E-L-L hockey stick uh, side of business that we've wished we hadn't had clients and probably try to steer away from people that are similar in the future, right? <laughs> and so, so, uh, so again, uh, a great way to to start to thin down who's the A's, the B's, the C's, and who's going to get pruned. So good. So we know if, if you're looking at your your database, if you're looking at your calendar, and you're you're thinking about the events that you can run. Hopefully, you've written some of these ideas, down, right? A Thanksgiving pie party, by the way, a horrible night to give out the pies is Wednesday, right? So usually, you'll see those happening on Monday or Tuesday, I always recommend that your clients put them in the fridge uh, because they do get moldy if you give them too early, right? So um, I know other people that have even done them the week before on that Friday or throw a larger event on a Saturday leading up. So if if you're looking to invite people to that, it obviously starts with an email, right? And so we go from an email to a text to invite for those that we haven't heard back. I know a lot of people over the years that have joked about, hey, if, uh, if they don't respond to my email, they don't respond to my text, then, uh, then that's okay. I've done my part. I've, I've invited them. I don't care if I don't have to spend money on them. I've had my touch. <laughs> but again, it's one thing to invite. They do get some uh, dopamine uh, kick from being invited to something and feeling included. Uh, and you definitely go an extra mile if you pick up the phone and call your A's or B's and say, hey, listen, I sent an email. We sent a text. I haven't heard back from you. I wanted you to know we're having a pie party. Could I get your pie order, right? I want you to come pick up a pie from us. Uh, I'd love to see you there. And then again, if they still say no, we we have literally just helped them to feel a part of the tribe. Even if they've got some big business happening that week, they're already out of town over the weekend before, and they're just not going to be able to come see you, right? What I did before on, on an event like this is we turn the reverse pop buy, which is them coming to us to pick up something, uh, into an actual pop buy. So if I call that person on the phone and they said, oh, I'd love to make it, but I've actually got my work party that night. And I say, you know, Karen, we appreciate it, you. Uh, and we want to make sure that we we thank you uh, with some pies this, this Thanksgiving. So is it okay with you if I deliver it to you the next day? And then you're only going to get about a dozen of those, right? <laughs> you might have a runner that you can have send those out. But again, talk about a way to, to make your closest clients feel super appreciated uh, when you've got a list of that hundred where you have five or 10 that say they can't make it and you, you take it to them. So something to keep in mind always uh, goes for a great way to keep that engagement. Obviously, we're going to have some social media posts to talk about these. Uh, some people, depending on the events, you might even want to send out some mailers. If, if it's a large type gathering that you know you can have more people, uh, depending on the part of the country that you live in, or if obviously most of you are local, you're probably not doing like a a movie out at a farm or anything this time of year. But I know some people throw some really large uh, pumpkin parties just for Thanksgiving, and not even for, for Halloween. So not Halloween themed, but you know, you just go and you pick out your pumpkin from a pumpkin patch and, and that can just you know, get a bund bunch of vendors there and a bunch of food. And then just invite people into kind of like a little fall harvest day. So great thing to invite you know, your seas to as well. Uh, and also a thing that you could use for mailers to get people that are not part of your current network, but are part of the community too, and that your own clients can invite people to. And so, so again, you know, I'm sending out a mailer. Can I send that mailer out three days in advance and expect a reaction? Likewise, if I'm trying to get a community to invite other people in their community, I know people that uh, have done like days where they wanted to... Um, you know, get get a school involved, uh, a high school or a college involved in some particular event that they were throwing, um, an elderly community, like we're we're you know they're they're providing meals for the elderly or something. They wanted to let everybody know at their adult day center because they're doing transitional uh, housing and helping with clients or whatever the case may be. But they send them out the flyer uh, the day before the day they want to do the event. That doesn't help anybody. Right? Like, there's not enough time to make a decision. So make sure you're looking at the calendar and you're putting on your calendar the dates that you need to have this communication. If you've got questions about the dates, what types of dates look good, happy to take some calls afterwards and help you all through that. And so 
So these are the reasons that we're communicating, right? So let me know if you're if I'm missing any. We've got our Thanksgiving coming up that we're going to be talking to people about. We've just talked a lot about pie parties, a lot about thank yous, a lot about being grateful. We have Christmas coming up. So in our final seven minutes here, let's throw around one or two ideas uh, for each of the holidays we bring up. What what can you do for Christmas to let people know that uh, to to invite people in to be a part of your tribe or throw an event? And, and get engagement from, you know, this is part of you being a part of their holidays as opposed to breaking them out of their holiday routine, right? You see how that's different? So if you're a part of the hustle and bustle because you're doing something fun and festive, a Christmas light contest. Oh, I love that. Have you done that before, Corey? I don't know if I've ever. So how do they do that? No. Okay. Well, that's a great idea. I love that idea. I'm like thinking around in my head. Like you could drive around and do like to get people to enter. You could drive around and judge it together. Talk about a great reason to go live with a bunch of your clients or 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 gets or maybe have them have them tag you with their light entry uh, on social media, and that way, like you know, everybody that tags you gets to be a part of it. But and then and then you judge it live or something. I don't know. Like I'm thinking, I'm thinking with you. That's a great idea. Great way to get some engagement in a different way. Perfect. Home decor contest, twelve days of Christmas contest. I love both of those. Got my gear spinning. Love it. Good. You know, I thought it was fun. A lot of people do like breakfast with Santa or they'll they'll rent out a restaurant um, for a morning and just bring people in for bagels, coffee and donuts and sit on Santa's lap. Uh, a few years ago, I started seeing a twist to uh, um, breakfast with the Grinch. Yeah. So for, for those in your life that are a little bit more twisted, you know, they could do Santa or the Grinch or both. Right. <laughs> uh, and that could be a little bit fun. Maybe Grinch at the bar. Right. Shots with Grinch. Who knows? Right. Let's see if we can grow Grinch's heart. You know, one of the things that we're talking about doing here in our Cyberbacker team is we're looking at doing a Thanksgiving Day uh, dinner giveaway. And so it'll be a little bit, again, kind of a reverse outreach where we have people call us and nominate others to, um, to give Thanksgiving dinners. And when they call us, we're going to thank them for, for reaching out, right? And, uh, and so they will call us for us to tell them thank you, but also get the name of some people locally that they love to see, uh, that they know could use could use some help with the Thanksgiving dinner. So that's one of the things that we're doing, uh, you know, because again, this is why we started this business is we want to give back. And so, so that's one of the pieces for us. Share your favorite holiday recipe um, and, and spirit. Yeah, you know, uh, James, you mentioned that. I know somebody that would do the pie parties and, and maybe you guys have seen this too. And the way you get a can of, uh, of whipped cream uh, as you invited somebody else with a referral to come to get a pie party too, right? Like, you know, uh, if you come to pick up a pie and you invited somebody else to come pick up a pie from us, we'll, you know, you get your big can of whipped cream on top of it, you know, uh, something to that effect, which is, again, talk six bucks for a referral. Are you kidding me? Right. A $6 pumpkin pie from Costco to talk about a great ROI. Right? Uh, so yeah, perfect, perfect opportunity to to bring some people in uh, through those gatherings. So you know we've got Hanukkah. I know a lot of people have done uh, festival light parties uh, over the years. So here's another thing. I know every now and then on when I do this uh, class, people have jumped up and said, "Okay, Jeff, but what if we don't know what holiday they're celebrating?" And here's my encouragement to you to just ask them, right? So here's how that question goes: What big events? Are you celebrating or do you have the rest of the year? You know, uh, most of us have friends that are Jehovah's Witness or or other friends that don't really celebrate major holidays. And so if they don't have an event that they're celebrating, obviously, we still want to say thank you. We still want to say that we're we're grateful and we can still invite them. Uh, I don't know if they'll come, but we can at least find a way to, again, be a part of their story as opposed to having them be a part of ours and figure out what we can do to help support them and their holiday celebrations this season. Fair? Because even if they don't celebrate Thanksgiving, Christmas, or Hanukkah, we've got Festivus for the rest of us, right? So if you guys don't know the Festivus reference, then uh, then I'm sorry. Uh, that's all I got. And we do have the new year, for sure. For sure, we've got our, our Happy New Year with 2024. Okay, so... Finally, and, and we'll finish with a couple minutes of questions, but I do want to draw your attention to this. This is next month's class. We've got 2024 and beyond crafting your vision. And so again, like this is all part of making a big goal. This is all part of having a big vision. As a coach, the number one reason that I have clients that start with me is because they haven't been able to figure out how to hit their vision, hit their goals, 
uh, on their own. And 99% of the time, it's because they haven't spelled it out correctly. They haven't written out their vision. They don't know what they want to do five years from now. So it's really hard to figure out what it is that they're doing this year. A lot of times when we spell out five-year goals, I see people hit their five-year goals within a year and a half. It's pretty tough to hit your one-year goal, oddly enough. But when you know what it is that you want to accomplish five years from now, it's easier to hit your five-year plan uh, than your one-year plan uh, when you know what it is that you're doing to get you there. So so call me on the next one, scan that to pre-register if you want. We don't have the event right up yet, but we'll have it up very soon. And Shara will enter that for you if you need to talk to Shara, uh, obviously feel free to, to reach out to her uh, and schedule a business evaluation or uh, take a screenshot of this and share it with a friend to get a business evaluation for them. Uh, and we would appreciate that. In the meantime, what questions do you have? What's your big takeaway? How can we help you on this topic some more? Corey, thank you. Thanks for showing up. What's your, uh, that you're gonna take away from this and, and back to your business? For me personally, Jeff, um, of course, it helps me to realize the importance of keeping in touch with our clients, most, most especially with these holidays, because they're also getting busy. And for sure, we want to uh, make sure that we are consistent when it comes to appreciating them as well and help them as well, even though it's holiday. So, yeah, I think, I, you know, I, I pick up a lot of golden nuggets today. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, no, awesome. Glad. Good. Good. I make you come. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I think that's a that's a that's a great point out though too, Shar. Right, and and that is look at, at the very worst, at the very worst case scenario going into the fall as we plan our business, we talk about our business, and we know the volume that we need to do. At the very worst, we can call all of our clients up and say thanks, right? And uh, uh, even if they don't pick up the phone and we just leave that voicemail, and you know, it's it's a great return for us uh, just to get recentered on on who it is that we're dealing with and, and, and where success comes from, right? I think it was Sam Walton. I used to have a friend that put this at the bottom of every one of his emails. Sam Walton, I think originally said that um, every single one of our clients can fire him. He was talking about himself, right? All of my clients, like I, my could fire me today just by choosing to spend their money somewhere else, right? <laughs> and and how true, like we're all, we're, we're all only as good as the relationships that we've built uh, inside of our business. And at any point, a customer could just go somewhere else. And um, I don't believe in the word past customer or past client. I think once a client, uh, once a customer, always a customer or client for life, just as far as how it is that I will treat them and the relationship I have with them, I'll always be grateful for the time that they spent with me, even if they never come back, right? So keynote, cool, good. Anybody else want to share what your takeaway was? I'll share. So there was another coach that had talked about Thanksgiving week being call week and he only really calls like like this is his major thing <laughs> right and I was like if you hadn't mentioned that I think I would have forgot oh good right good. So I need to just add that to my calendar and be like okay Thanksgiving week is call week Monday and Tuesday is the focus and Wednesday if there's any leftover yeah there you go block it now right mm -hmm. most of us yep. are eating leftovers on Friday Nisi but I got you I'm just kidding Fair, fair. Thank you for sharing. Thanks for coming. Carol, you got anything before you head out? All right. Well, thank you all. Thanks for your time today. Always appreciate you joining with us and playing all in. Uh, thanks for helping spur some conversation and for being involved. And thanks for being clients. We'll, we'll see you next month. Thank you.